Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, sorry for my absence. I uh, only have the weather to blame. It's been uh, really super hot out here. Uh, it's been, you know, like 108, 109, 107. Uh, finally, we got everything down to where we're just in the low hundreds today. Uh, it's not as oppressive as it was. It just gets really hot here in, in the uh, garage. I mean the uh, studio. So, <laughs> But you guys know I film in a garage anyways. I have nothing to hide. Uh, this is uh, really, uh, I think, a really cool knife. It's one that has been on my radar for a long time. And I'm not just talking about the uh, the Kudu light here. Uh, but this kind of started it. Uh, I did this review about a week or so ago. Uh, you know, the slip joint uh, Kudu. And I mentioned in there that I always wanted one of the uh, ring uh, locking knives. And so I went ahead, uh, you know, I wasn't really looking for one, but then uh, Tobias Gibson, thank you Tobias, uh, put out a post about an eBay seller that had some at a really good price. And so I was able to uh, pick one up and here it is. And this is an actual Okapi that's made in uh, South Africa. And we'll kind of go over all of this stuff, but uh, it's really a, a kind of a cool knife with a neat history to it. Uh, it's got the, the moon and the three stars uh, that are inlaid and glued into the, uh, into the handle. Uh, it's a wooden handle, not a uh, plastic handle like that one is. Uh, and here's your locking mechanism. Here's the uh, actual locking tab here. And you see all these uh, bumps and stuff. That's, uh, these are also called ratchet knives. And that's kind of, it's kind of like a half stop, I guess. It was supposed to, you know, let you know that the knife is closing or it would, you know, at least stop. Give it a couple more places it could stop uh, before it closed on your fingers. Uh, and then, of course, you have the uh, back spring and this uh, little slot here where the uh, tab will go into. And then, of course, you pull the ring to get the uh, pressure off of that. But as you can see, it does ratchet into place. I did that slow so you guys could hear it, hopefully. Uh, but then here you go. It has the uh, Okapi uh, there on the blade, South Africa. And you're looking at a four inch uh, knife blade, uh, five and a half inch handle. You know, So it's about the same size as the, uh, the Kudu Light. You know, it's... Definitely got a different bow to it because you can see that the, the knife blade is kind of angled down. So when you're holding it in your hand, uh, and I didn't find a really good place to put my thumb, uh, behind the stop or on top of the, the tab is okay, but it's not really comfortable. Comfortable, but you know if you just go slightly behind the tab, then that works out pretty good. As you can see, there's lots of handle. So this, this handle shape is good for really any size hand. Uh, just a really kind of a, a handy work knife. And that's what this is. This is at its basic level, just a work knife. Uh, let's talk about the uh, Okapi animal real quick. Uh, on the box, it has a better uh, representation of it than I have. I, I didn't have a, a picture of one, but you can look them up. They're really kind of an interesting animal. They're an endangered species and they're related to the uh, giraffe. So they have like the head of a deer, uh, the body shape kind of like a giraffe, but then it also has stripes like a zebra on its legs and hindquarters. Kind of interesting stuff, but uh, you know, that's an animal I wasn't really familiar with, uh, but I do enjoy watching a lot of uh, those African wildlife uh, documentaries. They just, those are fascinating to me. But uh, anyways, to go back to the knife, as you saw on the packaging, it said it was uh, since 1902. And basically in the early 1900s, uh, these knives were built in Solingen, uh, Germany, and they were uh, exported to the uh, German colonies in Africa. And then in 1988, All Round Tooling bought the trademark and the tooling, and they moved uh, all the production of these knives to South Africa. So these are being made now just outside of Durban. Uh, it's 
really a, a very interesting knife. Like I said, one of the things I found was really interesting is if you notice, there's a plunge here on the uh, back side of the knife, and there's not a corresponding plunge on this side, which kind of means it it really has kind of a, a chisel grind uh, instead of having an apex grind, which I thought was really an interesting choice for a work knife, but I don't know exactly, you know, traditionally what they were doing. I'm guessing these were, you know, used on the farm and the ranch and stuff like that. I don't know why they chose a, a chisel cut other than possibly it was easier to sharpen in the field or something. I don't, I don't know, but that's kind of an interesting thought. The, uh, Blade steel, it just says on the box that it's made from stainless uh, slash carbon steel. The only place I could find on the web that talked about what kind of steel it may have uh, said that these are probably made of uh, 1055 uh, steel, uh, which is a low carbon uh, carbon steel, but it's made usually for things like uh, axes, hatchets, machetes, you know, that kind of uh, working tools, which that kind of makes sense because, you know, if they're making, you know, other implements for the farm in the field like that, then, you know, they may just use the same steel for the, uh, for the knives. As you can see, it has a nice polish on the, on the uh, blade. Uh, the handles are made of wood. It's uh, two pieces of uh, resin impregnated wood that are then glued together. Uh, not super strong construction you know you see your pivot pin here and there's no washers bearings or anything like that it doesn't have any kind of side to side play uh lockup is really nice and strong with this uh you know ring uh i would go ahead and just use it uh in a regular you know manner and i wouldn't get fancy i i've heard of uh people loosening the tension on this spring as you see it fits really nice around that tab, but they'll bend this so that then uh, they can close it easily one-handed. I would say that's probably not the best thing to do. Uh, closing it is kind of tricky. You know, you can, you can pull on it with your index finger and push with your thumb, and then, you know, you could put it against something and it would do like that. When I first got it and I wasn't really familiar with it, I was go ahead and just holding on to the blade, you know, with my, uh, left hand and then close it that way and you know as long as you don't have any meat here in this channel that's what you don't want <laughs> so you just have to be careful with these guys they are a little bit different they're kind of funky but I appreciate that funkiness because it's just a really cool knife to me you know I mean this represents you know Africa just kind of like the Swiss Army knife uh, represents Switzerland and the, uh, you know, uh, all the different kinds of, uh, knives and stuff that are out there from all the different countries. You know, we kind of did that earlier, uh, this year, last year, late last year, when we did the knives around the world tag and everybody kind of brought out different stuff. But if we ever do it again, I have one for Africa now. Well, actually I have two because I do have the, uh, the Duke Duke, uh, which, uh, you know, was, uh, actually made in Canada and then uh, exported to uh, Africa. So there you go. It was a, two, a twofer right there, which is always good. Anytime you can get a twofer. Or if you're in Canada, if it's Toonie Tuesday, you know, you never know what's going to happen then. That gets kind of crazy. I'll have to ask Stuart about that. I'm sure he has stories about Toonie Tuesday. But uh, yeah, that's pretty fun knife. Uh, like I said, I've just always kind of had a fascination with this and with, uh, with Africa in general. I, I always liked watching the, uh, wildlife documentaries and my, uh, best friend's dad introduced me to, uh, Peter Hathaway Capstick and, uh, you know, he gave me a copy to borrow of, uh, Death in the Long Grass. And then I, from there I was going to the library and getting everything by Capstick I could and had dreams of going on safari and stuff, but never ended up going. And that's okay. I'm uh, I'm fine just where I'm at with uh, with everything that's happened. But you know, it's one of those things that you know. I guess when you're a, when you're a teenage boy, you know, all kinds of things are possible, and you think of all all kinds of crazy things that you're gonna do with your life. But uh, hey, let me know in the comments below. Have you ever been to uh, Africa? Ever been on a safari? Do you have an Okapi, or do you just have one of the cold steel 
you know, inspired, uh, you know, kudus or kudu lights. Uh, Williams Knife Life did a uh, excellent video on the uh, cold steel kudu. I still want to get one, uh, and I'll compare it to this one when I get that one. But uh, the way it worked out was that I got this one first, and I'll get the uh, the cold steel version uh, last. But we'll talk about all of that when it uh, comes back. Oh, and just another interesting uh, tidbit. Uh, I did see where, I guess, uh, Keith Richards from the Rolling Stones carries one of these as his uh, EDC. So kind of a... Kind of an interesting thing. I, I wouldn't, uh, you know, take those guys for uh, for being knife carriers, but you know, maybe they are. Anyways, I hope you all had a good time. I will be back for uh, Fun Knife Friday. Don't worry, the videos are coming. We just had a, a hot spike, and I can't guarantee that if it gets really super hot that, uh, you know, I just, uh, I may have to take a couple days off. You never know. Anyways, you guys have a good one. Stay cool if you're in an overheated area, that's for sure. And uh, I'll talk to you guys in the next one. I'll see you then, guys.